Greetings, everyone. <coughs> this is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with the second part of the Weekly Comic Book Roundup. As I said in the last part, sorry this is a little bit late, but uh, things got a little, uh, things can get a little wonky at the beginning of the month, simply put. So, we're going to go and kick things off for this half of the roundup with Ghost Rider number one. Okay, so. Ghost Rider, the Spirit of Vengeance. Um, probably the most recognizable character to, uh, of the handful of uh, Spirits of Vengeance is Johnny Blaze, who was the first character from Marvel Comics to be, well, the Spirit of Vengeance. Um, the Old West character Ghost Rider was then retconned, who had also been a Spirit of Vengeance. And also, but his name was then also retconned to be Phantom Rider, not Ghost Rider. In the late 80s, Danny Ketch would take over, or would become Ghost Rider, and Johnny Blaze would, re would return. And over the course of, of two books featuring Ketch and one featuring Ketch and Blaze, we, were, we would learn that Johnny and Danny are half-brothers. Um, yeah, there have been, and there have been a few others as well. Most recently, Robbie Reyes, uh, who's running around in Avengers with a hot rod, with what's referred to as the Hell Charger. And also, Cosmic Ghost Rider from the far off, Frank Castle from the far, far future. So, what we know about Go Danny Kitch currently is that he is, uh, Basically, working on becoming a drunk and running, and at the same time running a bar. He still has access. He he can still turn into the spirit of vengeance, but he tries to avoid it. But when necessary, he will. So we open up in hell. The demon being tortured for the purpose of opening a portal. A portal into Earth. As the portal's opened, Bla King Blaze, all ghost rattered up, as well as some of his enforcers show up, but some of the demons manage to get through. He stops some of them, but uh, yeah, the ones he can stop, he goes after. Turns out that uh, he can basically smell sin, so to speak. In Brooklyn, Danny's in a fight with some of the uh, patrons of his bar, the Fade Away Tavern. As they tried chatting up his, the bartender, however, they've run off. With, they're stopped by by Stacy Dolan of the NYPD, Danny's ex-girlfriend, and uh, yeah, it turns out that Danny kind of screwed up a little bit. Because, well, they got, they beat up on Danny, then ran off without paying. So, no money for Danny, no tip for the bartender. Danny takes a brief ride as Ghost Rider, fights a demon, with an assist. With something of an assist from his, from Johnny, and but yeah, but overall Danny managed to be able to take it out. In hell, however, Lilith, 
I presume Lilith of the of the Lilin. I'll have to check to be sure. I'm, pretty, I'm fairly certain there are two different Liliths in uh, Marvel's mystical corner. So. Turns out she is wanting to take the throne of, take over the throne of health herself. So Johnny and Danny catch up a bit. Johnny explains to Danny that there's about a dozen or so more of uh, a dozen or so more demons running around New York. And he asks, you know, would you, you know, I, if, would you mind helping your brother? Would you mind helping me out? Does I get him, send him back to hell? And well, James says, yeah, no, I'm good. So, then we have a brief moment with Mephisto locked up in the hotel Inferno. as he claims that a war is coming. So, after Danny leaves the book, Johnny and Danny both leave the bar, Johnny following one of the patrons, D Danny going off to visit, it, visit his mother. And his mother's ghost comes to him and Explains to him that something's wrong with Johnny, and he's let hell creep into him, corrupt him, and that no good will come of Blaze being here on Earth. Then she tells him that Danny has to stop Johnny. Meanwhile, the bar patron that, jo that Johnny Blaze followed home is one of the demons that escaped. And he explains that they're they, some of the, a lot of some of the demons. They've been there so long. They've paid for their sins, and, and they've, they've paid for their sins a million times over. And they wanted something better. And, it, in all honesty, the, the demons that Johnny really needs to worry about are the ones who aren't running, the ones that are coming from for his for the throne. Then Johnny. He's point of saying he's the king of hell and he's not going to give up the crown without a hell of a fight. And it finished, however, the warning from Danny's mother, well, Danny and Johnny's mother, goes on to say that Blaze has gone mad with power. There's also a uh, brief write up of the, very, the various portions of hell within the Marvel Universe. There is, well, hell. A vast region of many powerful demons who trade on the torture of sinful souls. Though many have claimed to rule hell, the most famed overlord was Mephisto until he was dethroned by Johnny Blaze. Limbo, um, sorceress dimension populated by demonic spellcasters, twisted by dark energies. Once it was ruled by Belasco, it served as a home for magic of the X-Men during a very difficult adolescence, and was also for a while home for the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. Niflheim, which is beneath the roots of, of the world tree Yggdrasil, the realm of cold, fog, and death. Within Niflheim is the renowned region known as Hell, 1L, the domain of the Queens of the Dead, Hela and Carnella. Hell serves as a, as a resting place for the souls of Asgardians who do, not, who do not find their way to Valhalla, resting place of the honored dead. And there's the eighth city, which is used as an ancient prison for evil creatures by the seven capital cities of heaven. The below place. The source of an elusive kind of gamma energy that metaphysically connects beings who have been mutated by gamma. The one below all and his hordes of demons are kept behind the green door, which was partially opened in the accident that created the Hulk. To open it fully would unleash all those who hide in the shadow of God. 
uh, Sominus, which is thought to be one of the Splinter Realms. Ruled by the powerful demon Lord Thog. Is a dark, mysterious benevolent is a dark reflection of the benevolent realm of Theria, which is embroiled in eternal war, which is per perpetuated by Thog. The only purpose of life is conflict. But there's the dark dimension, which is ruled by Dormammu. Hades, on the border of the River Six and guarded by Cerberus. And I think that was supposed to be a. I think they went, didn't say three headed, but it said, it said three legged. And finally, the Brimstone dimension, which is where. The demon Azazel hails. Um, Azazel being the demon that possessed the man who, or not basically, Azazel being Nightcrawler's father. There's a brief. Uh, backup story called the Caretaker Chronicles. There's a girl riding a motorcycle in the desert, the Badlands. She comes upon a, uh, a library. Yeah, it is called to her. Um, she explains when her grandfather was a caretaker, he had a similar library. But he died and it burned, transferred all of his knowledge of the ghost riders and the role of caretaker onto her. But the books. She thought she already knew all there was to know about spirits, but she was wrong. And it looks like she's being shown a what's coming. Mephisto, Lilith, I think that's Belasco in the picture as well. But yes, the What's coming shot? I think that's Belasco over here. Standing in, on the side. Lilith is the is the uh, woman white skinned woman. Yeah. Interesting things to come. And that is Ghost Rider number one. Next up we've got Punisher number sixteen. Where we left off, the Punisher and his allies, Moon Knight, Ghost Rider, Night Thrasher, Black Widow, and Rachel Cole Alves stood against Baron Zemo's Thunderbolts and kind of handed them their asses. But during the fight, Rachel Alves, Rachel Cole Alves was captured. And Frank was told that he, if he wanted her, he had to come alone. So they're basically about to. Punisher's about to execute Moonstone and uh, Radioactive Man. But uh, yeah. Night Thrasher's like, uh, no, 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 you're not going to kill these guys. Moon Knight. Moon Knight's Moon Knight. And Punisher explains that they don't have time to capture all the mean men. They need to just kill the Thunderbolts and move on. Um, Night Thrasher gives him an ultimatum: do things, do things their way, and he and Puncher as a team, or he can shoot them in the head, and he's on his own. Puncher says, "Do you want these come alive? Merry Christmas!" But we're done. Thrasher tries to explain, you know, hey, you need us, man. But Punisher says, no, 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 I just eat Ghost Rider. And so, Ghost Rider 
gives uh, his Punisher with the penance stare. And Punisher keeps on calling it Blaze, knowing full well it's not Blaze, but yeah. But yeah, he. Punisher willingly asked to be hit with the penance stare. So Hydra has. Uh, you said, screw it, we're in, the, we're in the green suits. We're not hiding anymore. But Punisher and uh, Ghost Rider roll up on a motorcycle with a sidecar and a minigun mounted on the sidecar. Fisk is putting his tower on lockdown. And then Frank makes it in. Shoots through Rachel to hit Zemo. She she does admittedly say, hey, look, you know. If you're gonna if you're gonna kill me, you're gonna have to shoot you're gonna have to shoot through her, so he does. Zemo throws a sword at him and it hits Punisher up he around here. And they duke it out a bit. Ghost tries to stop the whole thing. It actually gets stabbed by uh, Punisher. It's confirmed that Rachel Cole Alves is still alive. And uh, on the roof, Ghost, still alive, but at least injured, seemingly kills Zemo. But before anyone can leave, a chopper arrives carrying Winter Soldier, Nick Fury, Hawkeye, Luke Cage, Black Widow, and, uh, yeah, they're not going to let him kill the mayor of New York. Frank seemingly falls to his death. Funny how there's some flame on the side of the building. Three weeks later, Fury meets with uh, Black Widow at the Brooklyn Bridge. And he says, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not mad at you for helping him all those times. And she kind of says, yeah, I'm not mad at you for selling him out. And he's like, hey, he's dead, though. But then, he met, but then Fury mentions that a Hydra recruitment center in Ridgewood, a lone gunman, killed 30 of them last night. And she says, hey, you saw a Punisher die. But Fury says, I saw him fall off a building. I never saw a body. I also saw flames on the side of the building after he fell. Flames like Ketch drove his bike right up the side of, the, uh, side of it. When your friends can do that, maybe you survive an accident like that. Maybe it wasn't even an accident after all. Basically, you know, hey, Frank Castle's dead. You, Fury, you won. But, uh, yeah, as you know, if he finds out that Frank is still alive, is out there and still alive, him and Widow are going, 
we're going to have another talk, and it won't be friendly. And she's going to have a good night, Nick. And leaves. And that's it. And that is also the end of the series. Kind of sad that, you know, there's two books coming to a close this week. Moving on to Contagion number one. So Contagion is a five-part weekly series coming out this month. Um, set in New York, obviously. So we, however, we begin one week a week ago in Kunlun, the uh, where Iron Fist trained. UT the Thunderer is called out. Apparently, a secret chamber has been had been recently discovered. Doing some digging, they found some infected bodies. However, UT mentions, you know, where's there? There are two here, but where's the third one? So, now, on Yancey Street, the thing is going to pick up Kitty Litter when one of the kids from the Yancey Street gang comes in saying that he needs things help. Thing is, like, yeah, no, I, I ain't falling for your fr pranks, pal. So, but Kitty tells him what's up. He would apologize for the last prank. But he's like, hey, some of my friends have gone missing. And so, kid takes thing where they were last seen, one of the abandoned subway stations. They find kid's missing friend, but she's infected with some kind of mold, much like the dead bodies in Kun Lun. But, uh, Ben Smart to know that he can't let. Let the girl touch anyone. So, he takes the kid's jacket, wraps it around her. But when he hears some, he hears someone coming up behind him. So he gives gives the girl to the kid, and he says, "Okay, you you hoof it out of here. I got I got to take care of business." And he's swarmed by moloids that also have the fungus growing on them. While he's fighting with them, he calls up Reed, and so they're headed. The rest of the are going to join them. Mole Man pops up. Turns out there was a, a diseased man who touched Mole Man and his moloids, as well as the kid. But Mole Man broke free. And the, the one. Patient Zero basically pops up. And infects Reed. And fights off. Starts fighting the rest of the FF. Jo also, Johnny gets infected. As does most of it, Sue. And UT shows up at uh, Gang of Rand's home. Basically says, hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for bothering you, but your entire world's about to be destroyed. So, Iron Fist is about to jump, get on the case. And that's where the first issue ends. Looks like we got ourselves a... Uh, Luke Cage and I are for this team up next issue, though, so. Yay. Alrighty, moving on to We Just Heroes Millennium, number two. So. First off, where we left off in issue one, Rose and Thorn, two women in the same body, Turns out they're immortal. And we've been seeing her live through 
various versions of the DC future. Now, in terms of, I thought, well, I thought that uh, the first issue ended in the early 31st century. It actually did not. In fact, it looks like it ended more in the, uh, at some point before the 25th century, which is where this issue begins at the Space Museum. And Rose is there walking around looking at the displays, including holograms of various member, age of heroes from the Age of Heroes. And uh, a docent from the uh, comes to talk to her. Explaining that she said, one, she, she sounds just like she was on Friend. She, she walked out of uh, the show Friends. She's using 20, 20th century slang and it turns out it's that the dose that she's talking to is not other than Michael Carter, Booster Gold. And he wants to go back in time and basically he, she tell, he tells her his the origin of Booster Gold. Then, further, further in the future, you run into OMAC. Who is facing off against uh, what looks to be a group called Intercorp. I'm re like, I don't know who these guys are that he's fighting. Uh, so, yeah. But he ends up talking with Thorne about what's going on. And so, she goes off into space. Keeping a journal. And she explains that uh, she's using her, her journals to technology. Well, to te technological advancements. Her first one's on a zip drive somewhere. And she puts this living technology is a very special kind of problem, a very old person's problem. So yeah, she just continues off into space. As Thorne, she discovers that drug dealers are still a thing and further out into the universe. Then uh, Rose makes it to the Vega system. And then later she returns to New Earth. Which, yeah. New Earth. I actually really love that shot. Then on New Earth, she comes upon the founding of the Legion of Superheroes. And, uh... Okay, we got, it looks like we got, we're getting some interesting variations on various characters. I honestly could not tell you everyone in this because they've changed it. Like I said, they've changed how some of them look. I don't know the members of the Legion that well. But she explains that, you know, she's sorry to such a special day, but, you know, her name's Rose Forrest. She comes from, she's coming a very long way because she needs to share a great, she has a great deal to share with them. And that is where the issue comes to close. Alrighty, last book of the week. Deceased, number five. So where we left off in Deceased, the anti-life 
equation had spread across the world, turning people into zombie-adjacent things, including various heroes, and was infecting people through, through A, bites, and B, social media. Phone, well, elect electronics, basically. During everything, um, in the last issue of Deceased, like the, act, the last issue, not the one, not the one shot from last month. Um, Wonder Woman Superman tried to prevent Captain Adam from, from destroying Washington. However, he went off and destroyed Washington. Baltimore, and it looked like he was about to take. And as the issue ended, it looked as though he was going to take out Metropolis. In DC, it's the good day to die. We would, we also would learn that. But uh, well, we see the Super Buddies and John Constantine dealing with everything, and Booster Gold ceased to exist, and. Constantine did what he could to fight things off, but and while he survived, well, yeah. So we begin in the ruins of, of Washington. Superman and Wonder Woman hovering over it. So, you know, three cities gone. Just gone. Washington, Baltimore, and Metropolis. Upon returning to Metropolis, however, it turns out it, we do learn that that well, I'm just gonna call her Green Canary now. But Green Canary uses the power, uses the lantern ring, and saved everyone that was, up, that was on top of the uh, Daily Planet. And Lex Luthor has survived. They said, you know, first off saying, hey, truce, I'm not here to fight you, I'm not here to add to, then he drops to his knees and says, look what happened to our city. So over the next few days, they took down the internet, every major ser server in every country, every mass digital broadcasting device, everything they relied on was severed. So the only way for the virus to spread was through people. Diana manages to convince the Mascara, the, the Amazon to allow to make, turn the Mascara into a, a sanctuary for people, while Superman, Wonder Woman, and Mira lift lift sections of the, of the ocean floor to add landmass to the Mascara. And Paradise Island was Paradise No More. Then there's the Gotham Jungle, which grew in a week. And so, Green Canary, Green Arrow, and New Batman go to speak to Poison Ivy. Upon arriving, they end up having to fight off uh, Killer Croc, who's infected, but the Vines manage to kill him. The Vines also manage to wrap up Green Arrow and Batman. Though Batman doesn't makes a point of telling Canary, don't cut the vines. And so they explain what's going on. Part of it being Poison Ivy asks, you know, why is a Robin dressed as a tiny Batman? And Damien Sabia says, Batman's gone. But Ivy apologizes to him. And they negotiate. And it said, you know, apparently Carly and Ivy have already started having the conversation. Though it's explained that it's not, it hasn't been so much of a conversation so much as Harley constantly nagging Ivy. And 
I mean, somebody says there will be rules. And she lays them out. The fruit of the green will be allowed to be eaten as the green wills it. If any human harms the green, they'll be exp expelled and fed to the monsters. Green arrow kind of seems harsh. Batman on the other hand is like, okay, yeah, we'll, okay, that, that, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. Um, Lex and Cyborg work together to engineer closed communications, and the Fortress of Solitude was set up as an information hub, as well as a new Hall of Heroes. And Cyborg's been working on plans for ARCs. Also, there's an amusing moment where Luther Lex says, you know, it's quite imp the plans that Cyborg are working on are quite impressive, and how, how they've never worked together. Cyborg says, you kept trying to kill me and my friends? <laughs> so, and Lex, in, in classic Lex manner, is like, sure, but in my defense, it was before I realized you were useful. But yeah, it turns out that Cyborg is designing arcs. The arcs that will fit 7 million people. And there's actually a, a great moment where it says, you know, I'm the, where Luther says, I'm the most intelligent person on the planet. And wait, Batman is dead, right? Oh, and what's that's going to be like, okay, I'm the most intelligent person on the planet. I'm telling you, the world is over. It's inevitable. The human race is corrupt. It has to leave Earth. But, yeah, Clark's just like, yeah, no, no, we're not leave, abandoning the planet. We're going to fight for it. Ma Kent even says, hey, if it's the only way, you know. Of course, Lex has to make a snarky remark and only get punched in the face by Lois Lane. Tells, tells him that if Lex opens his mouth again against her husband, she will smash it closed again. And she tries to pull it. Uh, violence is never the answer, John. But it's just decided that, yeah. The arcs will be built. Time was taken to grieve. So the, the, the first mistake is bringing everyone together. Turns out, Marshman is still alive, and he's infected. So he kills Lex, then he infects Flash. And while they manage to kill Jean, Barry runs... Barry, oh, Barry leaves because he's infected. Wally volunteers to go out from the screen. He's like, no, no, no. Because if you're turned, that's going to even worse. So, Superman says that he'll go. And so, Flash runs, runs away spreading death with every step. But flat Superman comes from the other side, the opposite end of the earth and uh, flies through the flash. Infecting himself in the process. He returns to the to the fortress long enough to basically say goodbye to have Wally connect Lois, Ma Kent, and, and Superboy to the Speed Force. Basically so he can say, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not going to be able to leave with you, I'm sorry, I love you, and yeah. 
But then he flies up into space. But he tried to leave to get as far from Earth as he could. But then he turns, and the last thing you see is heart turning and blasting heat vision from. Not sure if it's towards the planet or, or just in the space, but yeah. That's where the issue comes to its close. And that is it for this week's Comic Book Roundup. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, Live long and rock hard.